Hello everyone and welcome to this family workshop brought to you by the Great Exhibition Road Festival. My name is Lynette and I'm an artist. Today we will create artwork that makes an impact and send out messages for a positive change for the planet. Ribera is our British Sign Language interpreter and in a moment I'll be joined by Paloma who is a researcher at Imperial College London, and Zorian, who is a curator at the v &A Museum. We'd love to hear who you all are. In the live chat, if you want to, tell us your names and who the children and adults are, so we know who's there. If you want to join in the live chat, an adult needs to sign in with a, G, a Gmail address. So I'm going to start with the aims and objectives of the workshop. We're going to create artwork that makes an impact and sends messages for a positive change for the planet. You're going to learn more about how to make your voice heard in relation to climate action and how you can reduce your energy use. And we're going to take inspiration from activism posters from the VNA collection. And here's an example of what we'll be making today. So, as I said, um, I'm Lynette, one of the, the artists, and I'm just going to introduce you um, to Paloma and Isa. Hello, everyone. I'm Paloma and I'm a PhD student at Imperial College. My research is focused in finding solutions to provide energy access in communities that currently lack reliable access using renewable technologies. And we also have with us Isar Shah, who is in the live chat to answer questions. Isar is an engineer who's finding ways for us to build cities to protect the planet. So I'm going to invite you at home. If you have any questions, please write them in the live chat and we hope to answer them by the end of the workshop. So if you can get ready with your first piece of paper and pen and we'll start our first activity. So let's get in mind ready. Yeah, I'm getting mine ready to us. Well. Great. So hopefully you'll just need uh, a piece of paper, a pencil or a pen. And on the Imperial College website, there are nine things you can do about climate change, which Paloma will tell us more about in a moment. But first, on your piece of paper, I'd like you to draw the outline of a light one. And we're going to fill the inside with some squiggly lines. Um, I'm going to demonstrate for you here as well. So again, it could just be almost looks like a sort of balloon or uh, egg shape upside down. Just going to draw lines like this. And with your pencil or pen, you can just literally just fill the space as if you're taking it for a little walk and you can just doodle and just loosen up with your pencil or pen and you can continue that while Paloma and I will be talking and when I work as an artist this is often what I do to warm up. We also would like you to take photographs of your artwork and um, we'll share them as we go along losing the Padlet link in the chat. And there's a description underneath which explains the video. Okay. So Paloma, you work at the Imperial College um, and your work is all about energy and fuels. Can you tell yeah. us what fuel is? Yeah, uh, sure, Lynette. Uh, so yeah, my work is on, on energy uh, and related to your question. A fuel is a substance that is used to provide 
heat or power and this is usually done by by burning the fu the, the fuel um, for example cars need petrol to work just like we need food to be able to have energy throughout the day and what's the difference between fossil fuel and renewable fuels yeah so fossil fuels are non-renewable sources uh, so that means that the planet has a limited supply of fossil fuels and once we use them that that's it they're they're gone uh, and examples of fossil fuels are oil coal and natural gas as well and renewable sources are for example uh, solar wind and water power uh, and unlike fossil fuels uh, renewable sources as the name says are not likely to run out so another main difference is that burning fossil fuels is more harmful to the environment uh, because this uh, releases gases which cause pollution so that's those are the main differences and why is it so important for us to reduce our energy use well i can think about two main reasons uh, first of all to to reduce the money you spend on your energy bill at home um, but also to reduce the, the impact we have on on the planet so by using energy we also emit uh, gases so yeah it is important to to be aware of this and do you have any top tips for reducing energy yeah sure so there there are small changes at home which we all can make uh, and they make a difference for example turning the light offs and appliances when you're not using them uh, for example, instead of leaving your phone charging all night, uh, just charge it for a couple of hours. That, that's all it needs. Uh, another example of reducing your energy at home uh, is if, if you're cold, maybe put an extra layer of, of clothing in, and, and reduce the heating for one or two degrees. Um, another, another way is also making sure that your house is properly has proper insulation especially around uh, windows and doors so that, I think, that you Paloma we have like a little animation that shows ah, okay. the energy use in the home yeah yeah we can up. have a we can oh. have a look at that um but yeah I, I can I can talk you yeah through that talk in the middle. About how we can reduce energy yeah. in our house yeah um I can uh, I can see the animation yeah. now yeah so as I said yeah you can see um the windows there and uh, it, especially to put like drought drought proofing uh, around them so that the heat is not lost um, if you are in a so if you're a ho home owner you can make efforts to make your house more energy efficient but if you're renting a home uh, maybe you can put pressure on your landlord to make the house more energy efficient um, so yeah, another tip is to change your light bulbs to more efficient uh, LED lights. Or uh, if you wanna go further than that, uh, you can check who your energy supplier and provider is and try to change it for a energy provider that is powered by uh, renewable sources. Right, and you mentioned the light bulb. Just wonder how you're all getting on with your light bulb, do you yeah. think? Mine's filling up quite a bit. So. I haven't started, but I'll start mine and talk less more. So hopefully you've all filled up your light bulb doodles while we've been talking. And just a reminder, do take photographs and you can upload them onto the Padlet. We'd love to see what you're creating there. So this is um, what you do usually as an artist to, to warm yeah. up. Yeah. So as I was saying, my style is known as freestyle calligraphy. And um, I'm going to say a bit more of that, but I always do a little warm up and just to relax. Often when you have a plain piece of paper, it can feel quite scary. Like yeah. how do I start on this? 
So I always recommend just draw a shape, just relax and just imagine you're going to fill it up with different shapes or patterns, or as I mentioned, just taking it almost for a walk. <laughs> so we can all just do that. And before you know it, you've you filled up a space there, as you can see that I've done. Yeah. So just to summarize, you talked about cutting consumption, how we can reduce our energy use and how that helps with lower bills as well. So one of the things we're gonna do in the workshop is come up with a pledge. Um, and this is a positive step that we can make and I just want you to think about, I just wondered what would be your climate pledge. Um, and I'm going to explain what a pledge is. A pledge is something that you promise to do or to be. So I might make a pledge to use less plastics, for example. Um, so with another piece of paper, or you can turn your right. light bulb piece of paper over. I haven't got another piece of paper. I'm going to give you a few minutes to think about what is your climate pledge? What will yours be? And I'd like you to write that down on the paper and then take a photograph of it and we're going to add it to the Padlet in the link in the chat. If you want, you can also type your pledge into the chat. So Polona, while the families are thinking about what pledge they will make, um, and I thought of one. So for example, I thought, and I've used this in the piece that I showed at the start, I said, I'm, I am not powerless. There is something I can do to support kind of action. Have you got any thoughts? What might be something that's helpful? Um, that pam families can think about at home or what might be your pledge? Yeah, sure. So, well, there are many things that you can do at, in, at an individual level uh, to, to address climate change. One of them could be, as we said, like reduce uh, your energy at home. Uh, also fly less. Well, right now with the pandemic uh, that that had, that was set an option for a, a lot of people anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, try try to avoid flying and also leave the car at home. Try to, instead of using the car, it's better to like walk or cycle if possible or just use public transport. Um, another one, and I think this, this is going to be my pledge, is to eat less meat and dairy. Yeah. Um, so that, that's also a very important one. And uh, yeah, so there are many things you can do. Uh, also yeah. get involved with the uh, uh, climate activism, but I think we're going to talk later about yeah, a bit more are. about that. Yeah. And I've just been told that there's a couple of light bulbs have been uploaded onto the Padlet, which is fantastic. So I've seen some of those. Let's see if they come up. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Very colourful. Very colourful. And we've got some pledges coming in as well. I will tell people about what I do to protect the planet. That's fantastic. And we've got the, the blue colorful light bulb. It's almost glowing. It's wonderful. And there's one next to it as well. It's very lively. In the middle there, we've got all different colors. These are fantastic. And there's a pencil one as well, where it almost looks like the current yeah. wiggly lines there inside that one so these are fabulous do keep uploading them and i hope everyone's had a chance to write their pledge i'm going to write down the one i said which is i am not powerless so be sure to write down please your pledge and if you can also upload it and what we'll do is we'll start reading out some of those pledges. So we've had one already. And Paloma's one was to eat less meat. And we'll explain a bit more about why that would be helpful. So what would be your climate 
action pledge. I'll give you a few more moments to do that. Oh, and we've got another wonderful light bulb and there's a blackout binder on there. These are fabulous. I hope you've had fun doing those at home. Do keep uploading them, they're wonderful. I put, uh, well, my light bulb, I can show yeah. you this, it's quite <laughs> basic. <laughs> Yeah, but as a pledge, I put like power to the people, uh, and yeah, oh, related yes. to this workshop, I think, yeah, as yeah. you said, remember not that we're not powerless and we all can make a difference or put pressure uh, on uh, policymakers to make a difference. And there's another pledge that's been uploaded. Um, my pledge will be to tell people to use less plastics and also eat less meat. That's fantastic. That's great. So thank you. Do keep them coming in. Um, and thank you. That was from Lucy. So we've got some light bulbs coming in here. Um, drive less and walk more. That's another one. So make sure you've all got your pledges written down. I'll be explaining later on how we're going to be using those in the creative piece that we're going to make. That's wonderful. So we'll give you a few more moments with that. Any more pledges? Let's see, we've got some, anyway. Don't buy plastic for the sake of it. Yeah, Paloma, I think that, that's another good one, isn't it? And Paloma, are you able to See this one that someone's written. Uh, I pledge. I I think I cannot see them. My phone. Something about a phone. <laughs> Not to overcharge my phone. I think oh, it says yeah. yes. Yes, I like that one. Yeah. Absolutely. We don't always think about that. Is it really necessary to yeah. be charging that? And another one that's come in. It's about throwing less uh, things into the sea. Yeah. yeah. In terms of. The pollution so what goes into our dustbin that's a really good point now what happens to it and so much waste ends up in the sea sadly you are doing wonderful with your pledges i'll give you a couple more minutes and then we're going to be moving on okay so don't forget, if you do have any questions as well for Paloma, you can put those into the chat. Um, so we've had lots of pledges in there, not to overcharge my phone. I will tell people about what I do to protect the planet. That's wonderful. Thank you. And it's great you're putting your names on there as well. Okay, so in a moment, Paloma's going to be going off screen for a moment. But she will be back um, soon. We're going to have a last look. There's another pledge that's come in. Thank you. Okay. That's great. Oh, and more light bulbs. Fabulous. Yeah. So at this point, um, we're going to say goodbye to Paloma for now. And I'm going to invite Zorian onto the screen. Hello, nice to meet you all. I'm enjoying seeing the drawings very much. <laughs> They've been wonderful, haven't they, Zorian? Um, Does someone want to say briefly about who you are? Yes, my name is Zorian and I'm here at the Victoria and Albert Museum. I've been working here for about 10 years. I look after posters and prints, printed things. And some of those posters have been made over the past 200 years as well. Yes. Yes, some of our things are a thousand years old wow. in this department. Um, in, yeah. So. so we're going to start with looking at one of the posters, which is the youth poster. Yes. Um, so me and Lynette have chosen four posters that we're going to show you today. 
Um, and uh, the first two we'll look at were made um, about 35 years ago when I was little, and uh, the second two were made much more recently. Um, so this one is for a youth festival in Greenwich um, that was made by a community print shop. So there were lots of community print shops in the 1970s and 80s, especially in London. And people came together uh, for sort of free and cheap um, studio space and to share skills and printing equipment. And this one is called a poster proof because it's not finished yet. Um, as you can see, the girl's face uh, on the right is, is not been finished. It's because they make these um, posters with lots of different layers of colour in uh, screen printing. Um, and it's a mirror effect as well. So you've got these nice archways there and the next layer um, turns those archways into a rainbow. Um, so with the screen printing, um, you use a big squeegee uh, like you might have in the shower and it pushes ink through um, these screens. It's a bit messy, um, but it's, it is a lot of fun to do and it's still used a lot um, to make t-shirts and things like that. Um, and what I love about this poster as well and how it will relate to this workshop, it's the layout as well. So the way they have the writing going at different angles and they've got different sizes as well. So that's something when we start the practical that you can think about of your pledges, how your pledge might look on the page. And yeah. they've also got the page, which is called like landscape. So it's, it's the other way around. You have different ways to position your paper, either portrait or landscape. And this particular example is landscape. And so, this, um, just to say, they are still going. Uh, they've been going for about 40 years and they make murals all around London. They're called the Greenwich Mural Workshop. Um, so they're great people. Fantastic. And that's another thing that I do as well. I, I didn't say a bit more about my practice, but um, I created my first mural at the age of seven. And wow. I, it's a wonderful thing when you do public work, so it's out there and the message, um, how do you communicate your ideas? So that's why work that's seen on walls outside is so popular. And I still do pieces like that as well. Very, It's a very colourful piece I've done quite recently at a, a West London social club. So. That's great. Okay. So what were some of your favourite posters, Soren, and why? And before you answer that, I just again want to remind you all at home, if you've got any questions for Zorian or if there's anything you want to say about the poster, we'd love to hear. What's your view on it? What do you think about this particular poster? So over to you, Zorian. What's been your favourite poster? Well, um, in, maybe we'll get some more up. Shall we get the next one up? Yes, we yeah. do the next one. Um, the next one is called Fuel, a right, not a luxury. Um, so this one is using quite hot colours, isn't it? Like red mm -hmm. and yellow and orange. And these, I think, make you think of heat and fire. Um, so this poster was for a campaign that was trying to make sure that everybody has access to fuel, like gas and electricity to keep your house nice and warm. Um, but, you know, nobody's going to argue that that's not OK. But at the same time, I think a lot of the fuels that we've been using for a long time, especially coal and wood, are very bad for the environment and create a lot of pollution. Um, so. Um, yeah, we're thinking about um, insulation, which is sort of like putting big cushions or duvets in a way that are in your ceilings. They're made of all different kinds of materials that stop the heat from um, escaping. And um, all the green energy that we can use now, clean energy from the wind and the sun and the waves and things like that. Um, so this is quite an old poster, it's for a meeting um, that happened about 40 years ago, <laughs> but we c collect all sorts of um, things. Um, there's 20,000 posters that I look after, um, and this is just, just one of them. 
Um. <laughs> and what I like about this poster, with the writing of Fuel at the angle, some of you hopefully will have old magazines, and I'm going to demonstrate how we can maybe cut some of the letters out as well, and paste them at different angles. So I like the way you've got the, the big letters, the colour, like you mentioned, sorry, and um, it gives that sense of like energy and fire. And also the way that it's sort of like a torn effect, I know, it's like it's been torn by hand. So the angle is really interesting. And again, this is just using words, isn't it really? You have words and colour in this poster, which is what we're going to be focusing on with our techniques in this workshop. Yeah, there's some nice texture in the printing, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. And so I often use in my work as well, collage paper, paper that I might find, um, wrapping, anything that's lying around, I try to recycle with my materials that I use in my artwork. So shall we move on to um, the other posters? And also, um, don't forget, do keep any uploading onto the Padlet, or if you have any questions, please put them in the, ch in the chat, in the comments. So yeah, these two are little fabric patches, um, but we have posters of the same design as well. Um, and these were collected very recently, um, just a couple of years ago, um, with the Extinction Rebellion group, um, who are active all across London this week and next week, I think. Um, but they um, have been very um, popular, successful all around the world in getting people to um, join um, climate action, peaceful climate action groups. And so the one on the left, the green one, is a sort of um, simplified egg timer. And the one on the right you can see is more of an old fashioned egg timer. Mm -hmm. So an egg timer is um, where you have sand in uh, this sort of shape and when it runs through to the other side, um, then your time is, is finished kind of thing. So you can buy them in different shapes. You can get one for three minutes for an egg, which is how long it takes to cook an egg. Or you can get really big ones for longer time if you're cooking something more complicated. Um, but the more positive actions that we do now will give the planet more time. Um, and we can all do our bit, um, I think, to try and make things uh, better. But these, I think they've done um, brilliantly around the world because of the amazing graphic design and the colors that they use. It's very eye-catching and it's very positive. Um, so it's getting people you know, to feel positive about the changes they can make, um, that it's not too late to do the right things for the planet. And they've kept it very basic as well with the words. Yeah. So with this is like a pledge, isn't it? So act now is a two word pledge. So some of you with the pledges that you wrote, again, we're gonna be using those in our artwork in a moment. And also again, they've just got this image, but they've got type, the words again, really important. And I, I love things with words as you all know, and I studied graphic design at university, that was my, my background. And the powerful thing of the symbol and the colours as well really helps in design. So let us know, out of the posters that we've shown you, what were the favourite ones for you? And, and tell us why. So you can pop that in the chat. So out of those, Sorian, we had the youth one at the beginning, the fuel, and we've got these two from Extinction Rebellion. Um, it's a bit of a hard choice. I think for me, my favorite one is probably the youth one. I really love the colors that are used. I love the way it's symmetrical and there's balance in the piece. Yeah. So for you, what's been your favorite? I think my favorite is the pink egg timer one um, with At Now. Um, that's my favorite, I think. Great. So just pop in the chat if you have any questions or if you want to tell us what your favourite ones are and why. I'd be really interested to know. And we're so lucky to have 
you know, your expertise, sorry, and to talk to us about this and to look at these. Um, as you said before, there are thousands of places, is there, like items in yes. the collection at the v &A. Yes, and we'll soon be opening up again the store side so people can come and look at things that are not on display. So. Great. Okay, so in a moment, uh, we're going to be saying goodbye to you, Zorian. You'll be back later, though. Yes. And I'm, I'm going to invite Paloma back onto the screen. So thank you, Zorian, and I'll see you in a moment. See you later. Welcome Hello. back, Paloma. Hello again. So one of the things I was talking about, we're, we're going to be making a Cali graffiti pledge. Uh, we can make it as a wall hanging, we can put it on, on the wall like a poster. And from the materials I asked families to get hold of, if they could, for this project, was like old magazines. Um, I've got some here. So really just reusing materials. Do you have an opinion on that? What do you think about us using magazines? I think that's great. Uh, as you, yeah, as I don't know if I said it or not before, but everything we, we use has an impact uh, on the planet and on other living things. So I think it's, uh, we, we need to reduce our consumption and waste as much as possible. So this relates to like the three R's of, of waste management, like, uh, reduce the amount of waste uh, that you produce. That's like the first easiest step. And then if you cannot do that, well, reduce reduced things or things of waste in which you can reuse uh, something. Like for example, for this workshop, the, the old magazines uh, that you're gonna use. And also, well, the, the, the other step is to recycle so that you can give materials a new life uh, to be part of a, another product. Uh, so, yeah, the idea is just to keep uh, as much waste as possible out of landfill and give them a new yeah. life. Yeah. So I'm just going to give families at home a little prompt, a reminder. We're about to start in a moment our practical. So if you do have magazines to hand, um, make sure you've got your paper ready, pencils, felt tips, colour pens again. Um, rulers, magazines and glue, and we're going to explore in a moment doing some art with that. And I guess really what you're, you're saying, Paloma, as you said before, everything we use has an impact on the planet. Yeah, so yeah. these marker pens, these felt tips that we use. The colours, everything. Yeah, yeah, they're made from plastic, aren't they? We yeah. often don't think about that. Um, and we've had a comment coming from Isaac. Isaac has said he loved the youth uh, poster that we had before, Polona, because it has a lovely design. And yeah, I absolutely agree, Isaac. Yeah. The one from uh, Extinction Rebellion. The one, the one before, it was the very oh, first okay. one that had the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. words going at the angle. So yeah. Isaac, in the moment, that might be something you might want to think about. Maybe your page will be landscape when you start. So in a moment, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step Cali graffiti demonstration of what we're going to do with our pledges. And I'm going to show you this is how I work um, with my art in my studio, which is where I'm based at the moment, Ed, so you can see in the background. So if you can get ready your pledge, so, as I said before, you can see mine, it said, I am not powerless. And we're going to start with a new piece of paper. And if you haven't, you can still use the same one, that's absolutely fine. But you can see here, I've got another new piece of paper. And I'm going to start with filling in that space with some sort of background because I said at the start of the workshop, it's always difficult. How do you start when you've just got this plain piece of paper? So I can read, I, sorry, I can relate yeah. to that when I'm writing as well, like, yeah. <laughs> it's scary, a blank page can be intimidating. Yes. <laughs> so I always say, let's get it, get it covered. Yeah. So there's different ways. So some of you at home might have color pencils. So we're gonna start with that. 
that might be a way that you might want to I'm just going to get a colour pencil ready so you might just want to start shading like this so we're just making a background at the moment if I keep my shading in sort of one direction but you can change it as well and then you might want to get another colour just to add a and again if you haven't got colours you can do this with a pencil as well but you're just shading in here now some of you might have um, some paints to hand as well I'm going to demonstrate how you can make a background of that too so we're just filling in the space and you can see I'm still keeping some of the background showing. So if your paper is white, we'll still see parts of that coming through. It works with crowns as well, this idea. So I've got a crown here. And again, you'll see that I'm just shading different parts just to build up the background here. And then if you do have paints at home or again, fell tips as well, but if you've got some paints, um, you can just add, I'm just going to do a little demonstration here. And I'll show you my technique that I use for a background. Don't need much. What, what kind of paint is that? Oh, I'm really glad you've asked because <laughs> it's called acrylic paints. Acrylic, yeah. And what a lot of people don't realise, acrylics is actually plastic. I go to Piloma, is that right? Yeah. So I hadn't thought about this for a while. I just, I never really thought about where the paint came from. <laughs> and it's really interesting when something like this dries because it will drive hard into a plastic shape. Mm. So watercolours um, are, again, are, tend to be made from different materials as well. But yeah, I'm using at the moment acrylic paints. And it's what you said before, we just don't realise so many of our materials that we use in art. This brush that I'm using, the handle, it's got a plastic coating on yeah. it. You know, so maybe these are some of the things that we can think about trying to change for to have more materials that are using more recyclable and sustainable materials. So hopefully you filled in your your background at the moment, whether you shaded it. Um, yeah, so everyone's got some, and you still keep some of the space showing through. And mix it up, you know, use different colours. You saw in the posters, they had quite like vibrant, bright colours. Just have fun with it. You know, at the beginning, we loosened up a bit. So relax into it. I often work quite fast when I'm doing pieces. Um, and it keeps it more loose. I don't start worrying about it looking perfect. And so hopefully you've got um, some background and I'd recommend keep photographing what you've done so far, put your name on it, upload it into the Padlet so that we can then show them on screen. Um, and I really would like to just, Paloma and I would wanna talk about some of the things that you're doing. So please put your first name on there and yeah, take a picture at this stage as well. So while we're doing this, um, would you say, Pauline, are you aiming for people not to use any energy at all? Any energy at all? Is that even possible? Uh, it is possible because some people don't have energy. For example, mm. uh, in, in Africa, um, it's most of the countries... Uh, their rate of electrification is like some of them 10%, some of them 50%, not like in the UK or or even in Mexico uh, where they have higher rates. 
but it, this this should not be the case. Like mm. we, everyone should have access to electricity uh, because we need energy for everything, right? Like that to power our lives. Uh, what I'm aiming for is to people to have to be more conscious mm. about the impacts that our our energy needs have uh, on the planet, and so that they're they can find ways or put pressure on the governments and businesses to find ways to reduce yeah. those impacts as much as possible. And when you were saying like different continents such as Africa or in Europe, I think you can see as well where there's more rural places. So there aren't many cities, there's less energy, electricity used example. So there are different patterns, isn't there? So some parts of Africa, for example, there will be more energy use where there's more cities. And and as you said, it's not the same everywhere. Um, the, yeah. the quality of access to that across the planet. Yeah, so yeah. great. So the next technique um, that I'm going to demonstrate for you is us adding our pledge letter in. So you'll remember I said for my pledge was, I am not powerless. At this point, you might want to choose a slightly different colour to your background. I'm going to keep this warm colour going and I've got like a sort of crimson warm crown here. And then what you're going to do is write your pledge over and over and over. So I'm going to demonstrate that. And I want you to do the same at home. Don't worry about it not fitting all onto the page because we are just at the beginning when we warmed up. So you can see here, I'm writing, I'm not powerless over and over again. And it's a positive statement that we can make for ourselves to remind ourselves that we can make a difference. So I'm writing that over and over. So if you do the same with your pledge. And so Isaac, for example, you like the poster that had different angles with the youth poster. You can change the direction. But the main thing is to try and fill up your space your page with your writing, just as you did with the light bulb at the start. And you can change your colors as well. So I'm going to get a different color. And I'm layering up what's on the page. You can see it's starting to take shape now. And this style that is called Cali Graffiti, it's where you have the art of beautiful handwriting calligraphy and graffiti which is like mark making so the two words go together to form cali graffiti and a really big thing about why writing or making your mark has been with humanity for since the beginning of time is because people want to be known to be heard to be seen and that's why I feel, as we've seen with some of the posters that we looked at earlier, we have a message like that is really impactful. So how are we getting on? I hope you're taking pictures. Do upload into the Padlet. We're going to have a look at those. And I'm, just... I'm going to show you one more technique that you can do that you can add we saw the fuel poster that had the lettering across it and it had the the tear, tear effect rather so i'm going to tear some of my magazine here and this is a technique i often use in my work as well and it gives just an interesting texture there and you can do this with color paper as well you haven't got old magazines. So I often keep hold of magazines. I have a whole bundle of them. Um, it works with newspapers as well. So if you have your glue stick, 
and then you can just stick some of these down, textured backgrounds onto your piece. So you can do that now. And then again, just anywhere that you feel it looks interesting. Just have fun with that when you place them. So if you haven't torn some paper yet, if you've got some to hand, do it. It's, <laughs> it's satisfying. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> Close, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take that down. And then one of the other techniques I often use in my collages is to cut out um, letters. So here from the magazine, again, it could be a newspaper. And this is handy, Paloma. Look, I've just found, let's put it that way around, RE. Ah, it I like could be it. Re reused, yes. recycled. Recycle. So sometimes when I'm making the work, ideas just come as well. Yeah, I found fun. one that says origin appeal. So oh. that's quite yeah. relevant. <laughs> exactly. So just have a look. Um, if I said if there's any magazines, newspapers lying around, you might see in the words, oh, that's something I could use in my art. Um, so I'm going to have that. Re, and I'm really going to build that into my design. So I'm, it's made me think of writing, add into my pledge, reuse, recycle. And these are all the things that are not powerless. So, yeah, any words or letters? And it just adds a bit more interest to your artwork. So if you get those cut out, and I'm just using my scissors, but you don't have to use your scissors. You can tear them as well. So we've got a few more minutes on this. So do make sure that you're getting everything photographed as well. I've got some helping you with that. Do you have, with the calligraphy, do you have to write it several times or once? Or yeah, how does it I work? do it over and over, uh, many, over. many times. And it's quite relaxing for the mind as well. But yes, it's the layered effect. So we're going to look at the moment, just giving you a little reminder, families at home, make sure, please, you're getting your artwork ready because we're going to discuss and look at some of them on the screen in a moment. So a couple more minutes. And I never know when to, it's really hard to know when to stop with my work as well, and I find that quite a challenge. Um, you'll see in my studio behind me, there's a, there's a big piece of this Cali graffiti style that I use. And I like the fact that sometimes with the layering, it's not always um, clear straight away. You have to look at it for a little while to then see the message. So people like that about my work as well. You have to pay attention. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, just start filling in. Oh, we've got three pictures uploaded so far. I'm really excited to see those. A couple more minutes. Um, and again, don't worry if you haven't had a chance to put your pledge on them. I know some of you were still thinking about that as well. Uh, you might be focusing on the background technique we've been using today. And I just keep going, I just keep layering. Um, I'm also using different materials, you'll notice. So I've got felt tips, I'm using crowns, colour pencils. This is called mixed media. So, last few moments. And we're going to maybe look at some of the colours that I've, I'm really interested to see what, with the pictures that have been uploaded what colors might have been used as well. 
So I've got a really interesting question for you, Paloma. Why do you think artists and designers, as well as scientists and engineers, are doing work around protecting the planet? Uh, well, I think because we need everybody on board to take climate action to protect the planet. And the connection between uh, artists, designers, scientists and engineers working together, uh, I think it's very valuable because, uh, for example, for scientists, uh, working with an artist helps them, well, helps us communicate their research in a more accessible way. Uh, and also, as you were just saying with like, your calligraphy technique that people usually need to, um, yeah, it's, it's not that obvious what mm. you've written, so you have to pay attention. Uh, so I, I think that helps engage the wider public on taking action, right. uh, climate action, or, or being interested in a certain subject. Like this workshop, like yeah. it makes you think about like uh, what's climate change and what are the impacts of that and what we can do to to yeah. So to fa avoid it. yeah. Families at home, I want to ask you the same question. Thank you, Paloma, for sure. explaining that. Um, so families at home, I'm going to ask you the same question, and I'd like you to put your reply in the chat. So the question is, why do you think artists like myself and designers, such as those who've done the posters, as well as scientists and engineers, why are we doing work around protecting the planet? What's your view on that? So give you some time to think about that. Why do you think artists, designers, scientists and engineers are doing work around protecting the planet? So while you're doing that, you again pop that into the chat. That'd be really helpful. And in a moment, we're going to be welcoming back Zoran. And we're gonna have an upload on the Padlet. So I'm gonna encourage everyone, if you haven't put your picture yet on the Padlet, Now's gonna be the time. It's your last chance to add any photographs for the show at the end that we're gonna look at. And we really would love to hear your responses, please, to that question. Why do you think artists and designers, as well as scientists and engineers, why are we doing this work around protecting the planet? So we're going to be finishing off in a moment. Um, maybe you can also tell us in the chat what you've enjoyed so far about this workshop. We've got a comment that's coming from Anne, which is, you can make a difference. Thank you, Anne. And there's the piece there, fantastic. So we're gonna have a look at some of the work on the Padlet. And at this point, probably gonna invite Zorian to come back as well. Hello again. Hi, Zorian. Oh, what's happening for this? Ooh. So we've got a few moments to pick out some of the pieces there. So this particular one, was that from Sorry. I think the name said there. It'd be great to have a look at some of the. I, I love the way the one on the edge there with the writing, and they've made use, they've torn the paper for extra effect there. Okay, we've got that particular one. And Good I to know who the artist was for that one. Yeah, and I think it was a paper from the light bulb, so I think they reused it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> might be. Wonderful. And we've got Jargo has done one about fish in there. Let's get that up. Fabulous. Composition there, layout. What's this orange one? Yeah. Yes. 
Nice. The pledge has been written there. I can see parts about that being powerful and it's very oh, intriguing. It's... it almost looks like a fossil fuel to me, something natural, organic. I really like what you've done with the shape there. You got any others we want to quickly look at? What's this one that's got buy, don't buy plastic that's written over and over as well? Like the colour you used to have got there. Yeah, we've got textured piece there. If you look closely, can you see Zoe and, and Polona? What's written in that one? Is it less plastic? Yeah, clean? I think so. Or just less plastic? And you see, they've drawn you in. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful design there to get you to have a look. Engaging. Yes. Yes. So. So we've had fabulous pieces of info on Sophie. Let's look at this one, which says, help the planet. Mm. Very, a lot of energy and a sense of urgency in that one. Yes. Powerful piece. These are great. And so creative, <laughs> wonderful. So again, do let us know in the chat what you thought of the workshop. Um, really, what would be the next steps we're going to be finishing off soon but paloma um what might you say might be some of the next steps that people can do uh well i think it would be great if people send this uh as a pledge to their mps or local representatives uh so yeah basically make related to the nine things you can do about climate change uh, make your voice heard by those in power uh so tell your member of parliament, uh, local councillor or city major uh, that they should take action on climate change because it's important for, for all of us. Um, so yeah, you can just find, who, find out who your MP is and the best way to contact them. If you go to the uh, page, uh, uh, we can send the link around of like the, the Grantham Institute of Nine Things You Can Do About Climate Change on the first one. There's a link when you can contact, find out who your MP is and contact them. Um, That's brilliant. Yeah. And yeah, I love the idea of sending them the artwork that you've made today. Yes. You know, and they are fabulous. So, yeah. yeah, if there's any last pieces, do make sure we get them into the chat. Are there any final comments from the chat that we're going to have a look now? Because we're going to be finishing off shortly. So do let us know what you've felt or thought of the workshop. What was your favorite thing today? That'd be really helpful for us. So Laura has said the workshop was amazing. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed it, Laura. Thank you for that feedback. Tell us what else you thought. We've got a few more minutes. Well, not even minutes. We have less than a minute. Egg timer. <laughs> Time running out. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lewis has said, I've really enjoyed today. Thank you so much. We've enjoyed seeing what you've all created as well. Your pledges have been wonderful. So what do you want more of next time? What should we do next? Thanks. And Anna said, thanks for a great workshop. So what I'm going to say before we finish off, thank you. Um, thanks for joining our workshop. And a recording of it will be available for you here on YouTube in a few minutes if you want to rewatch it or to share with your friends. And um, we're going to be posting a link in the chat to a quick survey where you can tell us what you thought of the event. We'd love if you could take five minutes to tell us. And please keep your eye out for future family workshops from the Great Exhibition Road Festival. The next event is about sounds, stories from the rainforest. So thank you to Paloma, Zorian, Isar and Ribera for joining us. And it's bye from me, Lynette, and bye from all of us. Goodbye. Bye, thank you, Lynette, bye-bye. Thank you.